a particle of charge Q1 equals positive 10 microcoulombs sits fixed at the coordinates x equals 0, y equals 0 0.5 meters. A second identical particle, Q2 is equal to Q1, that means it's the same as this one, sits fixed at the coordinates x equals 0, y equals 0, uh, sorry, negative 0 0.6 meters. What is the electric field at point A located at x equals 1? y equals 0. So I have taken the liberty before recording this video of drawing out the situation and that's really the whole the whole game here to understand what you're looking at. I'm gonna label this charge here. You can see I've put a point down at 0 and 0 0.5 and I've also put a point down at 0, negative 0 0.6 and I have put charges of positive 10 times 10 to the negative 6. Now that's important. That's what the micro suffix means, okay? A micro coulomb is 1 times 10 to the negative 6 regular coulombs, and of course that's what we have to work with. And I've labeled those two things, right? So we have this diagram of what's going on, and these two charges, they're putting out an electric field, okay? They're putting out an electric field that maybe looks something like this. All right, so they are positive charges, so they are emanating their electric field. And we're interested in the sort of overlapping of those electric field lines over here at point A. So to answer this question, we need to know the formula in general for the magnitude of an electric field. And that formula is that E is K Q over R squared, okay, where Q is a charge. K is a special number, 9 times 10 to the 9th. Some textbooks have it as 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. I'm just going to throw down 9 times 10 to the 9th for the special constant that goes there. And R is the distance between your charge and your point of interest. Okay, So the R might be this, whereas your Q might be this. Of course, that's for one charge. All right, But the situation with multiple charges is not really uh, too complicated. Okay, we just say that the sum of the electric fields is the sum of the contributions from each charge. So you might say K, Q1 over R1 squared, if you decide to name one of the charges Q1, and plus K, Q2 over R2 squared, if you decide to call one of the other charges Q2, now at that distance, R2. Well. The real bugger in this problem is actually the R1 and the R2, okay? We're going to fill in the distance for that and the distance for that, but in order to do that, we might need to use the distance formula. Or, actually, let's make it simple. Let's make it less intimidating. Let's use the Pythagorean theorem. Let's imagine this as being a triangle, right? These things are not on the same line. Well, they are on the same line, but they're not on the same axis, you might say. Okay, so they're slanted from one another. So what if I said that this distance could be uh, solved by the Pythagorean theorem? If I said that this distance here was 0 0.5 from 0 to 0 0.5, and this distance was 1. Well, then by the Pythagorean theorem, your R1 could be the square root of 0 0.5 squared plus 1 squared. So off screen on my calculator, just real quick making another cut. I'm going to run that. 0.5 squared plus 1 squared, square rooted, and I'm getting about 1.12. Uh, All right, well that answers that. That gives me my R1 of 1.12. I can plug that in there. And then you could make this triangle too. Well, what if we made that triangle? Then we'd have a leg of 1, and this leg of 0 0.6. Pythagorean theorem doesn't really care about distance. I'm just saying going from here to here is 0 0.6 and across is 1. So I could say that R2 from the Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula is 0 0.6 squared plus 1 squared and running that one in my calculator is going to get me the slightly different number, 1.17. All right, and at this point, we're just ready to plug in, okay? So 9 times 10 to the 9th times 10 times 10 to the negative 6 over 
1.12, don't forget the squared. Let me try and make some space and write a little bit smaller. There's that one. All right, and then we'll just have the other slightly different version of this. 10 times 10 to the negative 6 over 1.17 squared. Right, so what my calculator says uh, as a result of doing this operation is I get the surprisingly large number 1.37 about, and that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, times 10 to the fifth power. And that is electric field, so that would be in newtons per coulomb. Okay, that is the sum of the electric field contributions from each source of electric field. And that will be the solution to this problem, or at least this part of the problem. And there was another part to this problem, and I have placed it on the screen here. It said that a third particle of charge Q3 equals negative 4 microcoulombs is placed at point A. So we can stick a new charge there, put that guy there, and call him Q3 at negative 4, remember, times 10 to the negative 6 regular coulombs. And the question is, what is the electric force acting on it? Well, remember when I had those electric field lines emanating from the two positive charges? Because they're positive charges, okay, they kind of shoot out their electric field instead of sucking them in. And we're going to see how these field lines interact with this charge. And this is quite easy, considering the fact that we already know the electric field at this location. Sticking a charge there basically makes an electric field exert an electric force. With the simple formula, simple formula, F equals QE. That's actually a vector formula, okay? So the force direction will follow the electric field direction, or the signs will be consistent with the plane and the directions of what's going on. I'll explain that in a second. But this is an easy formula, okay? The electric force exerted on this charge at this point is equal to the charge, which is negative 4 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, times the electric field at that point, which fortunately we already have, 1.37 times 10 to the fifth. So you punch that into your calculator, and you get negative 5.48 times 10 to the fifth. We're talking force here, so that would be newtons, all right? So there is your answer for that part of the problem. Quite simple. Why did it come out negative? Well, the negative sign makes sense. You see, this is a negative charge. And the negative charge, you'd think, would be attracted to this positively charged glob. Another way of thinking about it is that the negative charge actually moves opposite the direction of the electric field, okay? That's the whole, the whole deal with negative charges. That's just what they do. They're counterculturalists, right? So this guy is going to try and make his way this way, all right, uh, because of the negative force. And that's why we're seeing the negative number here, because that's the negative x-axis. We've established this to be the positive x-axis when we said that this was positive 1. So there's your answer for that. No big deal. Uh, so uh, good luck with studying your physics, and I hope that this video was helpful for you.